Welcome to the second third of the show. <laughs> we are moving on to a new theme. Uh, the theme is uh, we became who we are because of each other. And I can see like quite a few of you out there who helped to make me who I am. Uh, so, especially here in the front row. Yeah. Um, so I guess I should switch mics now. I'm going to keep this mic because I can't turn it off. All right. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm going to read something that I entitled, We Became Who We Are Because of Each Other. Uh, what I want to say about these themes, I want to say something about the themes, which is that we had a bunch of questions that we gave the um, performers uh, to help them kind of think about the pieces that they created. And then once they created their pieces and sent them to us, we looked at the themes in their pieces. And that's how we created the sections of the show. And then Elizabeth and Thea and I wrote to those themes. Mm -hmm. So the things that you're hearing us write are reflections on the things that you all wrote. Uh, so we became who we are because of each other. I got the name Femme from you, Femme. I learned the curve of me from the curve of you, from your strong chin and your guarded eyes and your shoes, <laughs> from the bigness of you and the smallness of you when you'd let it all go for a moment and just want what you wanted. I saw a fierceness in you that I didn't know could live outside of a tiger's lean body wrapped in a faux fur coat and peeling nail polish. I learned to stand wide like my legs were a bridge, carrying us all to the next place. My skirt a tent to protect from the elements with a warm fire inside. I drove my pile deep into the bed of the bay. I found my words floating on the water. I turned east and saw what I had been running from. I looked it square in the face with those fierce eyes that you taught me to flash. This community grew me like a houseplant born from wild clippings, overwatered at times, a burst of pruning, wilted flowers cleared for new growth. Other times, shades drawn during vacation, I sat in a dusty corner. There were moments we both wondered if I could be nursed back to health, all my branches brittle or leaves yellowing, but the core of me remained a wet wick. I got the name writer from you, writer, Trying to paint your laugh with my words, memorialize a moment with you in a kitchen. Over your shoulder, Victorian houses mixed with newer architecture, not yet caught by the rolling fog. Sun glinting on your teeth while you were making a sandwich. The deep, tim the deep timber of that laugh, delighting in the present moment in which you were not yet dead, only slowly dying. I saw a welcoming in you that I didn't know could live outside of a mother's arms. Cancer covered in flannel, warm weathered fingers running through short gray hair. You threw open the windows and showed me that sometimes the sun sets and rises in the same moment. I learned to ride a feeling until the feeling subsides, to pick up the feeling and turn it, see every nook, every crease, the way the sunlight and shadow play over the textured skin of the emotion. The breeze had a particular smell when it floated through an open door and passed lunch meat on the counter. I learned that the sound of your laugh will last much longer than your mortal flesh, and the feeling of the sound of your laugh even longer. I used this community like a life raft, throwing off unnecessary weight to stay above a churning maelstrom, scrambling onto whatever bit floated, sitting atop whatever I could get under me, whoever I could get under me. I bailed water, I plugged leaks, I grabbed your hand and you grabbed mine. Most of us stayed afloat. I got the name Mother from you, Mother. Your son lay on his stomach in a sandbox and noticed each piece of stick, bit of tree, his world a few inches from his face, fingers tracing the texture of wet sand under dry sand, finding that flat edge, that tension where wet and dry meet a submerged surface. He turned his back to the squeak of the tire swing, the cawing of the bluebirds and the eucalyptus trees, the sharp juts of noisy breath coming out of other children in the midst of play, 
You washed diapers and cut zucchini while I did your dishes with soap that smelled unfamiliar. You sorted toys and put away in possibly small shorts. I saw in you a heart I didn't know could live outside its own human body. It waddled around on two feet, exploring bugs and trains and water tables, but never other people. You showed me that sometimes a heart can break and expand at the same time. It can hop into someone imperfect and perfect them, using only a trick of lighting. I learned from you to delight in my son's particular knowledge of the Pokemon canon. <laughs> <laughs> to care that he learn consent and kindness, but not care if he ever learn eye contact or compliance. I learned to smell the top of my daughter's head every night. Folding my little pony underpants, filling out field trip permission slips, being quizzed about Star Wars characters' histories while packing lunch boxes, repeated reminders to put on your shoes, put on your shoes. <laughs> I became a mother like you. I laugh in the kitchen with two tow-haired children and remember to notice the sun glinting on their teeth. You drilled me on the complex dance of moral education, engendering gender freedom, and letting an autistic child be autistic. I mirrored the fierceness of your words, language and machete clearing a path for our children, literal tigers protecting our young. I am a mother to this community, many of whom suckled at my breast and then grew fledgling wings. I left them the nest. They needed its freedom, its blood-red walls filled with our names and our pictures. And I flew east and built another nest made of Legos and new episodes of the Americans. <laughs> my two fierce, welcoming hearts running through my backyard, not yet caught by the rolling fog, chasing each other and laughing. Wow.